Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from j and Aerospace, and this is installment three in Science Olympiad Flight Review for the 2024 contest season. This week, we are looking at things from Retro RC. So, we have two airplanes to review. So, we're going to kind of build these two side by side. Uh, the reason we're doing two here is because Retro RC has a Division B and a Division C kit. And uh, they, uh, most manufacturers do in some way, shape, or form. However, Retro RC's Division B is a monoplane and the Division C is a biplane. So we kind of have to review both of those because they're different from each other. So with that, let's, uh, let's get inside the kits and see what's in there. All right, so we're going to start out with the Division B Cloud Dancer. Let's pop it open. This is a uh, fairly conventional uh, layout airplane with the... Um, I'll get all the goodies out here. It is uh, tip plates and twin rudders. So, like I said, fairly conventional airplane. Um... Oh my, this comes with some interesting things. So I had better read the instructions before I get too far in. Uh, so these these are these kits have a lot of stuff. So you've got your rubber, you've got the, the hardware pack, uh, Delrin mounts for the front end assemblies, you've got two IFAS propellers. Um, I assume this is going to become a covering frame. You've got some carbon, uh, several different sizes of laser cut wood parts, several more in the form of your uh, wing tips, which this year uh, I kind of weep for this because I missed the 3D printed ones because they were so cool, but these are balsa wing tips. And then, um, Mark, you're a little OCD with this one, uh, bagging your, your bag, but... Professionalism is professionalism. And, of course, some uh, nail files. And lastly, like I said, the uh, it includes two IFAS props that are actually boxed separately. That's interesting. So, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to open the other one, and then I'm going to read through the instructions for the first one. They're going to be fairly similar, other than the biplane aspect. I want to mention uh, just a, a little bit as far as the configuration of the uh, Division B airplane. If you look at that, that looks very similar to most of the other airplanes that are out there now. I don't believe for one second that Mark is copying other people's airplanes. Mark is too innovative to, to really be doing that. More, I think, that you know he's had various wingtip designs like this uh, with, with very creative tail surfaces. This is a change made based on his own testing, and it does show that there is a tendency of these de designs to develop towards something that's a general optimization. Um, and so we're all independently, um, or at least most of us, arriving at a similar configuration for what works for the most students. This is the Cloud Hopper, and so it's a similar configuration. So we're, we have more or less uh, stinger style wing tips and, and thing, uh, or freedom flight, however you want to look at it. Um, winglets only on the top, on the upper wing, which uh, Mark's been doing that for two years now, so that's nothing, nothing really new there. Um, and so we're gonna pop all of this out for the biplane. Uh, we again have the covering frame and what, ooh, we have, Triangle stock. Oh boy. Like I said, I gotta read the instructions. Um, that's not even true triangle stock, that's different. Um, hardware pack is the same, as you would expect. Uh, very similar uh, hardware in here. Some additional hardware. Uh, and of course you've got the bits in here for your covering frame, which I'm not gonna get out. And I did look, that is the, the covering frame. There are gussets and whatnot provided for that. I'm sorry, we're not gonna make that in the video uh, just because I, I do keep these kits around for research purposes. And so I like to uh, kind of maintain them that way. This is some sort of jig for aligning the wings, I believe. I'm gonna find out soon enough. 
So we'll kind of set that back in here. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to build, um, I'll show the flying surfaces for the, uh, for the biplane, the construction on that. Um, and then we'll do the mon the division B airplane off camera, um, just to, just for the sake of brevity. All right, I'm gonna um, just, we're gonna look at the plans here, but I, I first wanna admit, these, these instruction manuals, uh, the level of attention to detail, the gadgets that Mark recommends in here for using in construction and so on, um, is it a level you have to see to, uh, to fully appreciate. I do notice he has uh, whited out on the plans here uh, some CG information, so he has made some changes as that has gone on. Um, even in that short period, there are details on looking in here and adjusting uh, thin offsets and so on. You have, I'm not kidding, you've got full size patterns for all of the parts in the kit. You have these templates that you're supposed to build the flying surfaces over. Um, I'm in order to preserve these, I'm not going to do that over do this construction over these plans. Um, but that's also because I've got a lot of experience uh, freehanding it and, and having it work fine. Uh, but I, I want to point out that that is a thing and that you should uh, follow that if, if you have plans. It's just, I, I keep these in, when I buy these kits, I keep them in long-term long storage for uh, research purposes. But you should know that that's um, that's a thing. This is the, the, like I said, the attention to detail is is incredible in these. So we're going to build out the flying surfaces, and and you'll get to see how to do that. All right. So on this section, what we're going to do is we're going to pull out um, two sets of wing spars. We'll also get a set of tail spars. All right, so we've got all the parts cut out here. Uh, the stab spars here are made from crazy light wood. The wing spars are from moderate wood. I am assuming that that is selected uh, per. So that's um, that's crazy. Uh, the big thing to remember is on on these is that the center rib is a solid full depth. And so you have you want to ideally install that one first before the others so that you record that and that would be true on both your uh, your wing and your tail that there's a, um, a full depth rib at the center for, for these and this is true for both aircraft so bear that in mind All right, next thing to do is to separate out uh, your set of wingtips. I feel like the wingtips are from a little bit on the heavier side of wood. On the other hand, since there is so little actual material in them, that may not be so much of a problem. Um, the final stack up on the weights is really going to be the judge there. But that's how your wing tips are done. And so you make two sets of those and there you are. All right, I wanted to show, <clears throat> in addition to the uh, Division C setup, this is the Division B configuration. So these are your tail tips, wing tips. You can see this is much larger. So your Division C stab by comparison, and then your Division C wings by comparison are much, much smaller, which is what you would expect. Um, things to note, these spars taper out really thin at the tips. You do have to be a little careful there, but that also means that the structure is designed to limit weight at the extremities concentrated in the areas of peak loads and so on. Um, so again, very innovative kit. Uh, the, the attention to detail remains uh, excellent so far. This is uh, quite impressive.
All right, so we've got all of our surfaces arranged out, sprayed down. Here's our covering frame with the covering on it, as per the instructions, crinkled and so on. Try not to have a whole bunch of 3M77 residue on your hands while you're handling this. And so, um, there, all the parts are arranged as the instructions say to, to get it all to fit on one take on the frame. All right, so flying surfaces, Division B flying surfaces over there. Everything is good and nice. So for the upper wing, or the only wing in that case, I'm going to glue everything up here. So the, uh, as always, covering side out on your wing tips. And there you go. Same thing on the other side and so on. Plane flying surfaces with their nice wingtips and the monoplane uh, Division B flying surfaces. Very nice setup. Now on to the wing mounts which are in. There is so much here. So this is your wing mount jig for lining everything up. This actually has positive wing incidence input into it. Um, like I said, the attention to detail is definitely um, second to none. Next, we are instructed pop these little guys out in these uh, wing mount section sheets. And so these take care of your um, cross grain strength. You have to line up this little hole and not do what, what I did, which is to get glue in the hole, which you then have to figure out how to clear out of the hole. Do the same thing on the other side. And then you Pop out the excess here. Without screwing it up like I'm trying to. And then there's also, all right, so you've got this set up and now you've got this central part that you're supposed to pop out. So now you get this, which uh, when you flip it over, this is a mounting surface. The wing posts come up through this. 
Okay, this stage of the construction is, is very sensitive, so you gotta really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, so we're supposed to take these uh, stiffener side down in this orientation, so high side over here. And I have snipped these heavy carbon rods, so the tall one goes on this end. I'm gonna slide it up a little bit. We'll go ahead and stick the other one in now as well. And then we'll slide the other one on. This is slightly different from what's shown in the instructions. This is just what I felt like would be easier for me. Um, and then the orientation is absolutely essential on this. I feel like I'm doing it so wrong. I think I am doing it wrong. I'm still not understanding how to do it. All right, I think I've got this now. This is, uh, this is complicated. Um, I feel like this wing mount is probably a lot over-engineered. And I, um, I don't think it's necessary for it to be this complex. I get the, I, I absolutely get the design goal, but dang. I can't get the tape to stay. I mind you, I'm not using the right kind of tape, but oh. It's just not working. All right, so basically your goal here is to use this to line up these wing mounts um, parallel across. And ideally use a crossbar um, made from the um, Emery boards to force that. Um, I feel like the average builder is going to struggle to do this. That's my opinion. Okay, I've come to a conclusion. If you had a set of crossbars that went across like this, for these platforms to rest on, and then you could just remove these, but have them notch in, this would be 10,000 times easier. So Mark, if you're watching, that's what you should do next time. Because um, I'm losing my mind here, man. I'm sorry. I feel like a failure. I really do. All right, so at this point, this is actually the, the task that FIMCA was made for. Um, ideally, you have those emery boards across here, but I got this held into place where there's no twist, everything's lined up, so I'm, I'm kind of I'm taking my shot now. I'm attempting to take my shot now. Okay, at this point, what we can do is untape this guy from here. And we are supposed to Supposed to find a motor stick and tape it to a motor stick.
there's definitely some um, alignment work you have to spend time doing you got to hold everything in place here and ideally you're also taping the carbon in place on the motor stick and that then allows you to find out that your glue is no longer in the chat. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna snip off into little pieces of this thinner carbon, which frankly, this, this is unnecessarily large. Um, this is uh, 040, and that's what I would use for, um, that's larger than what I use for wing spars. Um, but is what it is. And so the way that you do this is you have these slots down under here that the carbon slots into. So you get this really nice arrangement like that. And repeat that a few more times. Okay, so the next thing that you do is that you install the wing, um, and I noticed something interesting, which was that I was really concerned because the wing posts are set to end up on the uh, right side of the fuselage, but we want, we really want some uh, left wing offset, and that is taken care of because this is actually your center line, not this primary rail. So that means we can come on here making sure this is the back, this is the short end. You really don't need a lot of glue. And I you don't actually need glue down the middle. And there you are. Now the main thing to bear in mind is uh, this does not necessarily give you much ability to adjust for wing twist. So bear that in mind. Um, but there, there are ways that you can force a little bit of wing twist in. Now the instructions say to use the, um, the jig here to set your, your upper wing. But the reality is at this point, that alignment's largely locked in. And there you go, all together. I don't know if it shows up on camera. I got this. You can see my up my upper wing is tilted a little bit relative to the lower one, um, and that's due to my errors in assembling um, this uh, wing mount originally in the jig. It'll fly fine like that. It's just that that's something to be aware of. Like I said, I um, I know, I know I didn't do it completely to the instructions, and I was having a little trouble understanding exactly uh, what the primary things were I needed to concentrate on. Um, maybe most people will do better than me. I suspect they will. Okay, now, now we get to another aspect of the kind of over-the-top going on here. So on our, on our fuselage here, we are going to glue a little stick of wood that is supplied in the kit. It's this little 1 8 inch square strip. 
have to make sure that you have proper orientation of the fuselage. Let me glue this little stick here. Now the next thing that we are to do is to execute an overlap on our, our tail boom. And the part that I'm a little confused by is the length of all that. Now there's an arrow that means uh, the leave indicates the forward direction and that's going to get mounted against um, the motor stick. I believe the overlap is to there, but I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do is refer to the, um, the plans. And so I'm going to mark where this lines up with the back of the fuselage. Now, what you have to do here is you're only supposed to glue this forward section of the motor stick, or sorry, of the tail boom to the motor stick while you're elevating this up one fourth of an inch. And the reason is this is actually a shim surface, so you can insert shims to raise the tail boom up like that. And so there we go. Now you have the tail boom and you're able to shim it up as needed to get the proper fit. The rear hooks are made from plywood. And you can glue them to either side. The instructions show them on the right side. And you line it up with the front of the tail boom. That's important to remember top and bottom on the on this fuselage. It is very very critical. And then the next thing that you do is install the front end assembly. These are made from um, I believe it is Delrin. If I can get this thing to go, there we go. You can go pop the slots clear on it, which is its own little challenge. And this part also is very important that you slide it in to where it angles off to the left a little bit. There's a little bit loosey goosey on the alignment because this thing actually moves around more than it you really uh, want it to. So you do have to pay attention that it's going on right. Um, this thing does carry a little bit of left thrust adjustment, which you want, um, but it can move around somewhat and that's not so good. And then you have a hole through here that you run the uh, binding thread through to get everything exactly right. And also I see that that's actually made with a little, tiny bit of down thrust. So again, everything is done to phenomenal levels of precision. I don't know how I'm gonna get that piece of thread out of there. This is sad. I feel so incompetent tonight. There we go. Thread that through. Put it on some still wet glue. Wrap it a handful of times. Just in time for me to screw it all up.
terribly, and I do mean terribly. Okay, so the next step is for us to mount the horizontal tail. Now, there's not a lot really talked about uh, tail tilt on here, so um, you kind of want to pay attention to that, but you can twist the tail boom a little bit to correct for uh, stab tilt needs. And so, glue it on with, with no further offsets. And then at this point, we can take the um, wing in place based on our desired CG. And if you remember, we said the CG is up uh, fairly far forward on this airplane. Maybe. There we go. So we have Ifus propeller. And that thing is low pitched. And we'll put these shims on made out of 164th ply. Put them on there, and then you slide the uh, propeller into place. Okay, maybe you only use one shim. Let's try that. There we go. Just one shim. And now it's in place. So this is what the, uh, the shims look like. And so now, hang on, we put a motor on the airplane. You need a 1.5 gram motor on the aircraft. Now you can start to CG it. And so we're balancing up forward kind of where we want to, which means I kind of got it right the first time. So put that down on a calendar somewhere. But, you know, Josh got the CG right the first time. I actually did that with the Guru plane, too. That was pretty cool. Like, put the wing at the right spot to get the desired 100% uh, CG the first time. It just worked. So there it is, ready to go. Okay, so that gets the biplane done. Uh, we'll get the, uh, the monoplane done next, um, but very cool airplane. Uh, challenging build, I have to say. It's, uh, there's a lot of stuff you have to pay attention to. I don't have enough stab tilt. There we go. But uh, it's a cool airplane, it looks cool. I'm sure it flies great. Okay, so we've got both of them here. They don't even fit on the screen all the way. So this uh, monoplane builds exactly the same as the biplane, just without the upper wing mount. Uh, so you don't need the jig to do all the assembly, but it builds about the same. Um, my biggest critique is the, the complexity of this area of the airplane. Um, is is pretty intense. So... That's my opinion on the matter. Uh, I think it's overbuilt in that area. It does not need as much material there. And so that's an area for weight savings, in my opinion. But it does come out very nice, this one does. All right, guys, so I am out here with the 2024 Retro RC uh, Science Olympiad airplanes, Division B, Division C, and we're gonna fly them. Uh, got a little bit of a breeze. Yeah little bit of a breeze uh, already I've got some concerns I did a few test glides and whatnot in the living room and uh, I, I saw some alarming issues related to the propellers on these as far as their impact on the behavior of the airplanes again if you can look at that and see 
I don't know how well it shows up right angle there but I mean these propellers are at pretty flat pitch I think I've got a, they, they've got I mean it's a pitch di diameter distribution I'd expect to see on a 3d prop or a half a gas prop or something like that this one I feel like is maybe a little higher pitch yeah, a little higher pitch than this one, so they're not con not uh, consistent at that either. I don't know how well that shows up, but you can see. Um, yeah, this is this is at lower pitch even, and that's that's going to be a that's going to be a problem. Uh, as far as the over quality of overall quality of the airplanes, they're great. It's the propellers. We're going to start with the biplane. Uh, a little too breezy to um, to do any test glides, so we're just going to go straight to adding a little bit of power. So we'll crank it up to about 0.3 inch ounces, because uh, I think these are going to need a fair amount of torque to get them moving. There's 0.3. I have gone ahead and I've put a shim in right here. Um, because there's a breeze, I can't really show you this, but I've got the CG up about 40% poured, uh, per the instructions. Maybe closer to 45. Alright, just to reiterate, shim to add in extra incidents so it doesn't dive with all that propeller pitch. And, oh, that's... That's a lot of torque for just a gradual descent. Okay, now we're up to 0.55 inch ounces. Hopefully it climbs. Eh, that's actually climbing. Oh, as soon as it gets the nose down, it outruns the prop. There are now two 132nd inch shims in there for a total of 1 16th inch of shim. We're at 0.7 inch ounces, which is crazy. And... Are you kidding me? It's just not going. What the heck? What the heck? It can't even... Alright, this is point freaking nine inch ounces. Yep. Okay, so... I don't think this plane's even flyable with this propeller. Okay, science lesson. Propeller. If it breaks, then we'll know that this is just not doable. Well, they won't even hold an increasing pitch. Are you freaking kidding me? These are terrible. All right, we'll at least try that. That'll at least tell us if it's if it has any chance at all of doing anything. Well, it's not climbing, but it's also not overspeeding the prop. I didn't hear about the rattling this time. All right, that's 0.7 inch ounces. And we're still not real happy, but we're starting to go. Oh, don't do that. Oh, it hates this propeller is the bottom line. Wow. Wow. So I took a shim out, and it just, it dives in at first, and now it's starting to get away. This thing needs like one eighth rubber to get itself going at all. This is insane. All right, I basically can't get the Division C airplane to fly. Like, it's not one of these things that it's bad trim or well. It's got too much down thrust. The nose bearing is flexing down under the enormous loads required to get enough power to make it climb. Um, it's just, I'm, I'm getting 20-something second flights. This is insane. So we're going to switch to the Division B airplane, and we'll see if maybe it flies okay. Put a shim in on it uh, right here, 
Um, let's see what it does. Are you flipping kidding me? Okay, so what we're doing now, um, I'm going to try to wind this up a little more. I've added a little more shim even yet into it, so we'll see how that works out. And we're going to kind of roll from there. Um, I'm trying to not have to modify the propeller on this one as well, but it looks like we're going to have to. I, I mean, at this point, I'm sorry. These airplanes would fly better if they were supplied with the little, with like a SIG propeller or something like that. This is, this is terrible. Um, and these are not cheap kits and, and I can't get them to fly and I'm relatively sure it's because of the propellers. Are you kidding me? Go up, you stupid thing! Look at this. And I've got the wing as far forward as it'll go. Oh, well, we'll try another shim in there and see if maybe that helps. Alright, added some more incidents in, cranked in a ton of power. Hey, we're okay, we're climbing a little bit. Okay, we got a climb going. That's positive. I mean, we're wound. This is 0.75 inch ounces. This is a crap ton of torque. I mean, this thing should be on the on the surface of the moon with this amount of torque. Sure is a beautiful sunset. I'll leave this. It just torque backs off a little, and it just falls out of the sky. See anything different there? Yeah. That's a propeller that's designed correctly. And there's an airplane that's stalling all over the place. But at least it, you know, jumped away at first. We'll take out a little incidence. Alright, a little more power. And away we go. It's like a different airplane. I mean, look at that. We went from not able to sustain any climb at all, climbing on away. Now, I want to point out, it is, the breeze has come back up out here, so it's bumpy, and it's cold, so the plane's not delivering uh, full power. But we at least got a little bit of a climb going there. All right, getting really cold now, but here's the Division B airplane with the same propeller. Oh, yeah. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Look at it go. Dang. Talk about coming alive. I hope I get it back. Oh, wee doggy. Only positive here is that it's so cold, the rubber motor can't produce sustained uh, full torque, so it's not continuing to climb as long as it otherwise would. But good heavens, night and day difference. So you open up the turn after changing propellers and the plane starts flying. You see how bad, the, the plane's not out of trim. This is just how bad the conditions are out here. Yeah, I'm just getting thrown out of the sky now. That way it's fine. Just let it go gently. Step back. Oh, no. Well, yeah, step back out of the circle. 
Yeah, I think 332nd is a little mild on power for that. It needs a little more oomph. Okay, so we put a little bit of clay on the nose, and then this is also 0.1 rubber, which is a little thicker. Uh, get it? There you go. Well, there we go. Now, hopefully it doesn't stall now. Nope. It's doing okay. Now it's going up. Much better. Flies good. A little light on vertical tail area. Paul, please come over here. Come over here. Let it be. This is the stock prop with the blades cut down. Let's try that. Well, that's not bad at all. Hey, look at that. That flies right good. Interesting. And that's with the elevator shims removed, so it's just stock and got a bunch of nose weight on it. All right. Paul, you going to get it? <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. Vision B plane with a cut down propeller. Let's see what it does. Turn it a little tight. All right, don't run around with it, Paul. Just enjoy it. Paul, come over here, Paul. You hear Uncle Dan over there harassing you? It's kind of funny. I don't think this ever stops climbing. It just keeps going. And there Not we go. Good. Oh, nice. Nice. Sliding. I like that. Not, not, not you stay put with me, buddy. Got to restrain you or you're going to catch the plane. You're going to lose seconds off that flight. Can't have that. <laughs> it's just running out of turns there. Really pretty. Paul melted into a puddle. The plane is sinking like a manhole. Uh, there it goes. And, oh, it's going on the Icara prop this time, so let's see how it goes. Nice climb. That's on lower torque and it's climbing oh. faster. That's mildly terrifying. It's what, half of the RPMs and it's climbing faster? Yeah. <laughs> Once again, does it ever stop climbing? No. Two light touches and you're flying. Maybe? It's still climbing. No, it's, it's about, I'm surprised it didn't hit that time. Oh, is it actually nice? It's actually about how long you want it to climb is about a minute. That's a nice, pretty flight. Very. That's a happy airplane, especially with that 
think that curtain's at like 18 feet. All right, so what's our conclusion on these? Well, um, this airplane is configured like this. It does fly, um, not super long, but um, flies all right with the propeller kept down. This one I have, uh, I wasn't able to get it on camera, but I have gotten a few flights with the stock propeller unmodified and it, and it was okay. But the, the reality is that both of these airplanes uh, their flight times double when you put this on them. And that should tell you some things, uh, which unfortunately are not very good, which is that these propellers kind of take airplanes that are pretty meticulously uh, designed and make them uh, nearly impossible to fly. So uh, the bottom line is, uh, cool airplane, this one's a little light on uh, vertical tail area. If these were enlarged, about like that, you know, about 30%. Uh, uh, this would be a much easier airplane to fly. But as it is, it's not a bad flying airplane. It's not a very high performer, if I'm honest. Uh, I could probably get it dialed in to do a little better. Um, so I, I was short on time, and we spent so much time getting it going uh, with these propellers that I just have not had the opportunity to be able to, to put this out here. And it's one of those things that uh, I've got to at least get the, you know, the video produced. And, and so my bottom line is I'm thinking maybe uh, in a typical gym, maybe 90 seconds if you really work at it. I don't think it will do more. We have this one on video doing over two minutes with the Icaro propeller. So I, I think it's, it, it suffices to say this airplane delivers quite well. Um, and, and no issues there. Actually, I think, if I'm really honest, I think this, as a monoplane, would fly significantly better. Just my opinion. I really do think it would fly close to two minutes with uh, just a monoplane configuration. I know I was pretty critical of the wing mounts. I've kind of come around on those. I think they're pretty cool. And, uh, you know, I think they're a little over-engineered, but they do work well. And I was trying to assemble them late at night, and, um, well, it shows, doesn't it? So, uh, the bottom line is, they're, they're fun little airplanes, and they fly all right, um, with either modified propeller, or better yet, get you an Icar propeller and put it on the uh, supplied nose bearings, and the planes will fly quite, quite well like that, um, and, and they're a lot of fun. So, uh, next up is the Freedom Flight Airplane which all of you are bugging me about, uh, as usual, it happens every year. So we'll see you on the next one. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.